Good. Today is the day we honor the noble and the brave, the men and women who dedicated their lives and the sacrifices that they have made. When America had an urgent need, they were the first to raise their hand. Without thinking twice about it, they were proud to take a stand. Some came back from war with battle scars, others in flag-draped coffins. Even though their flesh may have left, their spirits will never be forgotten. They unselfishly and knowingly put their lives on the line. So when you see a veteran, thank them, because without them, freedom would have died. Let's go. Ryan Brennan is here to recite our standby uh, Veterans Day poem uh, in Flanders Field. In Flanders Fields by John McCray, May 1915. In Flanders Fields, the poppies blow between the crosses row on row. Mark our place, and in the sky, the lark still bravely singing fly. Scarce heard, scarce heard, amid the guns below. We are the dead, and short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow. Loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders Fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If you break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Hey, Ryan. <laughs> Hello, my name is Sophie Schneider, and I'm a sophomore at Hoppington High School. And I would like to thank Adjutant Whalen for this opportunity to speak before you all today. When you Google Veterans Day, the date November 11th is the first result. This is a day where people can take the time to remember those who have served in the protection of our rights and freedoms for this great country. But for so many, the ideals of Veterans Day do not conform to one single day. For so many, Veterans Day is every day. A day does not pass when they forget the haunting memories of war or the sacrifice of their years. These are the kind of memories that cannot be forgotten. Yet once a year, on November 11th, Americans attempt to put themselves in veteran shoes and to empathize. We want so desperately to remove any painful memories, but unfortunately, the past cannot be changed. The pain you have suffered and the sacrifices you have made have not gone unnoticed. And for that, I would like to thank you for your service. Uh, next, carrying on a tradition that she started all by herself, to recognize uh, Hopkinton veterans from uh, World War II, Mary Harrington. During World War II, Hopkinton lost 12 of its brave men. And what I've been trying to do is to do a biography on each of those people who passed away so that we can bring their sacrifices forward uh, as we celebrate Veterans Day today. The one I've chosen for today is Merton Chenard. Merton was born in 1923 at, in the family home at the corner of Cedar and B Street to Louis and Ruth Chenard. He was a graduate of Hopkinton High School and he was a hard worker as a young man, raising pigs and having a very large garden. This earned him a scholarship from the 4-H to attend the Stockbridge School in Amherst to study agriculture as he came from a family of 15, and at that time they were the largest family in Hopkinton, his efforts helped to support and feed his family. He joined the Army Air Force and was a 21-year-old second lieutenant navigator in a B-24 Liberator bomber named Part of Luck when he was shot down over Germany on September 28, 1944. He was part of the 567th Bomb Squadron and the 389th Bomb Group. Everyone on board bailed out, and later it was learned that Merton might have drowned in the Rhine River. He initially was reported as missing in action. However, after a year, the Army located the body. His father declined the offer to send the body home, stating that it didn't make sense that we never know if it was really him. Merton is buried in the American War Cemetery in Margraten, Netherlands. He was posthumously awarded the Air Medal with two oak leaf clusters and the Purple Heart. Today our battles are not just with enemies of our nation, but the enemies of all the good people of this earth. 
This country's military is combating evil in every corner of the planet. Yes, evil or the devil or whatever name you give to it must exist. It is really the only explanation for the atrocities and crimes against humanity that we can all view in this modern era because of technology. <laughs> History has shown us that isolationism and inaction to these inhuman offenses is a mistake. The leaders of our country should realize that with all our resources, we have a moral obligation to take up the mantle and defend all the innocent and just people of this earth from the misguided zealots. I believe that this country's young men and women are certainly ready to defend our way of life and freedoms that we enjoy as the generations that came before them did. Remember, this nation will remain the land of the free as long as it is the home of the brave.